What's good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of my Madden 23 expansion draft only franchise. We are in the off season now. You know, the off season in franchises are always, you know, the best episodes, but particularly in a draft only franchise. You know, you do a ton of work for the draft because it's the only opportunity you have all year to make your team better. And the pressure's on. You know, if you have a bad draft, uh, your team just didn't get any better. Uh, as we'll take a look at here at the mock drafts, has us taken Kevon Simmons? It's v that's very much a question that we have to answer is, are we going to take a running back top five? We also have the number six pick. According to mock draft three, I know sometimes they don't have the picks right in this, unless maybe they fixed it. I don't know. But by mock draft four, they're always set in stone. But if we could have two top six picks, I could go a long way to making this team better. But you know, if you have a bad draft in this kind of franchise, you're just basically trotting out the same team that you did last year. Whereas you know something like in a regular franchise like my Bears. You could say that our last draft wasn't great by any means, but you think back and, you know, you got Rashawn Gary and Noah Fant to fill your two biggest holes, and yeah, you got better. A draft-only franchise, there's a lot of pressure to have a really good draft, and so I'm excited for it. There's definitely some intriguing prospects. I don't love this draft, apart from the fact that I think it does have a generational running back in it. But do we even need to take uh, generational running back. Um, are we going to spend a top five pick on a running back when our offense wasn't terrible and our defense just was an absolute sieve, letting anything and everything by? Like, it's a, definitely a tough question that uh, I've put a lot of thought into between this episode and the last one. This is another pre-recorded episode, so. I'm not sure if any patch or anything has come out to fix franchise, but uh, this would have come out before that. So um, a lot of stability issues. So there's always the risk of the draft glitch. Um, uh, the reason I'm willing to do this off season, even with the draft glitch looming, is that the patch is also coming out pretty soon. Again, like I said, it might it's probably already out. Uh, as this episode actually releases. Um, so, we're going to let a lot of guys go here. Basically, these guys suck, and if they don't want to be here and they're going to ask for more money than they're worth, then we're not going to resign them. Which is kind of my thought process here. Everyone's either red interest or uh, one of the mentor veterans, which we're not going to resign. We're just going to sign new mentors at the start of every season once we kind of know what our team is and I have a better idea of where I want those mentors to be strategically placed. And so basically the majority of this episode is just going to be previewing and then doing the draft. We don't really have anything to do in free agency. We will look at the free agency recap once that comes along. You know, want to see where the biggest name free agents are going and especially Pay close attention to what our division is doing, you know, whether they lost some key players or they picked some key players up. That's always something to keep an eye on in free agency. So even though we don't have any hand in it, free agency still is something we need to monitor. All right, Mock Draft 4 is here, and we do have the first and sixth picks. That's really big. Um, maybe that increases the likelihood that we're willing to take a running back, just the fact that we have another pick so early. Because there are a couple of edge rushers that I like early. And um, that's our biggest position of need. So if we only had one top pick, I would be inclined to use it on a an edge rather than a running back. What I'm doing here is I'm putting Melvin Blair on our board and I'm putting them towards the top. I just want to see, since he's the top rated player, what I like to do is just see if you know we were to take the top rated player where the players we actually want would fall in after that. Um, let's move Darius Connor down. It looks like he had a scenario that's dropped him 24 spots. 
They have him taking us. They have us taking him at six. That's not going to happen. Um, so I want to see where he would go because I am interested in him, just not at six. So dropping him down, I just want to see maybe in mock draft five. I'd like to see uh, what it would look like if we took Melvin Blair at first, and then just anyone else at six, and then see where Darius Connor would go. I do plan on taking one of Wyatt Costanzo or Austin Hitchens. They're both pretty similar in my eyes. Uh, we both have an opportunity. They, we have an opportunity to get them both to 100% as well, if we so choose. Looking at Costanzo, first will be the first player that we preview. He's got A awareness and A finesse moves. Um, athletically, it's more acceleration. He's got that elite acceleration, but only good speed. And the 475 speed makes me think it's going to be like good 475. This is probably going to be like 81 speed, um, which isn't great at all. Austin, Pitchin, Austin Hitchens sorry, is in the same boat, however. Uh, he has A to B power moves, so he's more of the power rush variant of this top and edge. Here's the case in of what we have here. We have a couple of edge rushers that I like. I don't love either of them. And when you're taking a player in the top five, you'd obviously prefer to love them. I just don't see. There, there's just not one of those players available. There's not an edge rusher that I really, really like or love in this class. It's all just kind of players that are all right. And honestly, there's even a steep drop off after those two. There's not even like a mid first kind of, edge that I really like, honestly. So if we want an edge, which I do, I think defensive line has to be at the very top of our board of what we need to do this offseason. Um, and so I don't love either of the players, but we might have to force drafting one of them just so that we have competency. I, I'm confident that these players are going to be solid. I don't think either of them is going to be anything incredible. But just having a solid player on that defensive line, other than Timmy Reed, is just an absolute must for this team. It's too bad that both of them are currently projected to go before our sixth pick. I'd love to just pick one up at six, and then that would give us, you know, free reign to draft a guy like Kevon Simmons at one. Um, Darius Connor uh, is another position where we don't have really either safety position filled, and he's kind of the only guy that I like in this entire class. Uh, not a great safety class, not a great edge class, not a great corner class. All those positions are things that we really need. Just not a great defensive class in general, honestly, which is really unfortunate because we need a lot of help on defense. Just want to take a look at our picks here. Unfortunately, we don't have the top pick in the third because I accidentally traded our third instead of somebody else's third in last year's draft. Um, so two top six picks as we see the second, second, uh, the second second round pick. Wow, that was hard to say. Isn't till the very end. They're with the Chargers as they had a really good year. Made it to the AFC Championship game. It looks like, and so. That's our situation. Let's start to preview here position by position. I wanted to go through every position in the season, but obviously our season got cut short with just the connectivity issues, which is unfortunate, but we got time here today. John Michaels is the quarterback that's available in this class. Um, he looks like he honestly has solid potential. He kind of looks like the one of those generated, you know, 90 one throw power 91 speed guys usually has like normal to star dev uh, i don't think he's going to be generational uh his speed doesn't equate to like the generational court fast quarterback speed just kind of the good ones so i don't know if we're going to take him i i would imagine not um my plan has been throughout this year to stick with hamilton unless there was a generational looking quarterback Kevon Simmons, I am very confident, is the best player in this class. And we have the number one overall pick. We have the ability to take him. 
there's a lot of A's there. Trucking, Stiff Arm, Spin, and Juke, all A, as well as Break Tackle. Um, I mean, Carrying's a B, but other than that, everything that has to do with running the ball, he's at an A. So, with great speed and elite acceleration as well. You know, solid agility, good change of direction. Those are going to be like, what, like 85 agility and like 87 change of direction or whatever. Not incredible, but he's going to be really, really good. Um, it's just, do you take him? Uh, there's another top five guy. We know he's a top five player in this class. Projected round one to two. Um, another guy, a really great athlete. He kind of just looks almost like a like a discount version of the Kevon Simmons, which if we're going to draft a running back early, I'm not going to take the discount version of somebody. If we're willing to take somebody later and pass on Kevon Simmons, there is a really solid-looking uh, power back. He's only a power back. F juke move, C spin move. Um, you know the catching is not great either, but both A and break tackle, as well as the two power back abilities and stiff arm and trucking. Marlon Benson also solid as well. So that's the question. You you know you have a really good va value in Trevor Perry later in the draft, who's actually dropped a decent bit as well in this class. Let's just take one quick look at Marlon Benson here. Um, he can't juke, but he's B on everything else, which is pretty intriguing. So do we, do we spend the premium pick on the position? Do we get a good value late in the draft, or do we just... Stay out of the position altogether. I mean, we we got Devin Boykin here, who's around a one to two talent. So we'll, let's put him on the board. Um, let's go back here. We got a couple of fullbacks. Yeah, we might spend a seventh round pick on him. Maybe not. So that's just the question. We because we had two running backs that both averaged four plus yards per carry last season. Um. Quentin Bernard looks really good. I just don't know if I want to draft a fullback, and I'll tell you why once we get a little bit later. But both of these guys look really good. If we were to end up spending a pick on our fullback, I like both of them a lot. And I think they're, I mean, their ages suck. Quan Bramble's 23, and the other guy's 24. Here would be my argument for drafting running back as we continue on to receiver. Receiver is a class that I think is another one. Uh, there's some players that I like, none that I love. Seems to be kind of a theme in this class. There's only a couple players that I love, and Kevon Simmons is one of them. Um, it's just, do we draft a running back high? My argument for that would be the following. I think a lot of the fact that they had a good yards per carry were from the games that we played, right? But when we look back at the games that were simulated, they always had less than four yards per carry. And so... At the very least, drafting a guy like Kevon Simmons, a guy with higher ratings, he's probably very, he's either already over the threshold or very quickly going to be over the threshold of where Madden actually has running backs do well in simulation. And all of a sudden, our running game is going to be a lot better in simulation than it was last year with a guy like Kevon Simmons. And since we do, you know, simulate eight games a year, we play nine, simulate eight, and then we'll play the playoffs once we eventually get there. Um, that's very important is simulation. It's half of our season. Uh, Josh Johnson, an elite speed guy, but he cannot run a route to save his life or release. I guess he has some deep route ability. Again, I don't know if we're going to end up taking a receiver. There's some guys that are fine. They all seem like basically the same build as Eddie Hazleton, though, except for a couple of bigger guys at the very top. And I just like other players more at the top of this draft and other positions more than a receiver. So I think it's fairly likely we'll exit this draft without a receiver. I'm not going to say it's 100% there. If a guy I really want gets taken and all of a sudden, you know, a guy like Enrique Gray. Um, then, yeah, I guess we could theoretically see receiver. Tight end, though, despite having Lewis Smart, I think it's... Oddly enough, more likely we end up with a tight end out of this class 
than receiver. Like I said, there's not a lot of players that I love. One of them is a tight end. It's not Kurt Samuel. I think he's good. Um, he's not somebody that I would take while having Lewis Smart. But Luis Sanchez, very intriguing. Yes, he's 23 years old. He's got great speed, though, as well as a run blocking. So he's massive, 6'6", 270. Great speed. See, he's got good catching, and he's also a great run run blocker, I think he could be a tight end to slash fullback. And we saw that that does have a role, right? If we can combine what our tight end to and our fullback did in last year and make it into one person, I think that's a role worth drafting in the mid rounds, you know, two to three, late two, early three. I don't know where he's going to go, but I really, really like Luis Sanchez. And uh, despite having those smart, I, He's very high on my board, and I think just because he can play two roles in the offense with his run blocking ability, I think that makes him part of my game plan. Uh, We'll get through the rest of this draft before we shake out my game plan, but... uh, Uh, let's just continue going through the draft. Um, I typically like to have a plan of, you know, if everything goes right, here's what I want in the first two to three rounds of a draft. Uh, Devontae Wembley is fine, but he can't really run block. Uh, I've just been spewing out my thoughts instead of actually going uh, prospect by prospect here. I just want you to get a feel of the players that I like in this class. And if there's somebody that I really like, then yeah, we'll stop and talk about him. Other than that, I think I'd just like to use this time to talk about some general strategy in this draft. Um, Again, drafting tight end, just the position in itself. Uh, We saw that, you know, tight end two plays a role. And if he can double as fullback, that just increases it because both players have pass catching roles in this offense. Uh, We don't have any left tackles on our board. So let's go into the interior offensive line here. Another position where there's a lot of players that I like, but none that I love. Um, just, yeah, that's just, I guess, the general, you know, filling in this draft. One exception is Jerome Snell. He's somebody that very high on my board. Great strength, good speed, elite acceleration, A awareness, A lead block. And he's not going to have F in anything. He's not going to have A's either, but just getting a guy who's a little bit more balanced Really good athlete. Uh, probably somebody that we would kick out to guard. He does have, you know, the size to kick out to guard. He would be the third player, I guess, that we've gone through. That's on my love list, along with Luis Sanchez and Kevon Simmons. I'm just going through some other guys here. Yeah, I, I like Colin Olsen. Um, I don't love him. Another guy that I think is really good is Emmett Lewis. I just don't know if I want to spend the you know high first round pick, elite speed, good strength, or sorry, elite strength, good speed. Yes, that run block finesse is going to be F, but pass block finesse is a B. And then run back power is an A. I would imagine pass block power is also really good. So I like him a lot. The only reason he doesn't make my love list, I mean, I guess we could put him on there. I just think... I just don't think we're going to end up with him. I just would rather prioritize other positions in round one than offensive line. We took a round one offensive lineman last year. Um, and I think other than Kevon Simmons, I'm only really looking at defense in the first round. We really need to shore up our defense. Kevon Simmons being a generational looking player is the only thing that could convince me to go offense. That does bring us to defensive the defensive side of the ball here, which I think is my priority in this class. I just think it's a worse class offensively than it is offensively. And well, I only loved three offensive picks. So what does that mean here? Eric Nelson, three, four kind of player you see with the elite speed, but uh, elite strength. Wow. I'm mixing up strength and speed all the time here. Um, doesn't really have any A's though. He's got B power move and block shedding though. So that's encouraging. I like him. I don't love him. You know, once again, John Underwood here. It's more of a 4-3 end, but doesn't really have the speed. It's kind of what we're seeing here. 
over and over again, there's just not a lot of elite, you know, athleticism to go along with the skills in this draft class on the defensive side of the ball, which is unfortunate. I'd love to draft some, you know, elite tier athletes, Copeland, uh, AA block shedder. We do need help stopping the run desperately, desperately. Um, I like him. I just like a couple of other players better in this round one range, and we'll get to them later. We kind of already touched on them in Costanza. Oh, there we go. Disconnected. Right on cue. I really hope this patch comes out sooner and fix these issues. Um, I'm optimistic that it will because I feel like EA is going to not want all the crap they're going to get if it isn't fixed. But uh, well, let's continue on here, previewing this draft. Might have to go a little bit quicker because if you stay on a week too long, you just get absolutely wrecked. But yeah, there's players that we like all throughout the draft. I mean, I'm sure I, I would, I'm going to be very disappointed if we don't come out with two front four players in this class. I think that's an absolute must. One early round and then one mid to late round, just flyer. Um, seems like the absolute minimum for me. They might both be edges. I came Acosta here quite a bit. He's, uh, I mean, he's fine. You know, beef and SOC power moves. Has some level of pass rushing ability as well as some um, athleticism. So the late round, uh, mid round flyer. Sorry, not really a late round guy. I like him a lot. He's going to be high on my mid round board. Defensive tackles. Just a bunch of guys that once again. They're fine. They're draftable. I prefer more greats and elites there for a round one to two defensive tackle, but he's got eight power moves, A to C block shed, A to C finesse move. I think we will put focus player on Monty Booker this time around because if all three of those are A, I don't care that the fact that he's only good, good, and solid on the three important ones in strength, speed, and acceleration. Um, you draft a guy like that. Just a couple off-ball linebackers that I do like. Frank Whitaker, I just wanted to see. He looks like he may be a potential to be a hybrid. Ah, no, not really. He's really just off-ball. Um, but, you know, maybe a player that could help switch to a 3-4. I'd like to maybe switch to a 3-4, but I'm not going to force it. If the personnel fits better in 4-3, we're staying at 4-3. Um, I'm going to match my scheme to my players, not vice versa. Um, Shaheem Larry, you know, if we just wanted to take another off-ball linebacker. Greg Lacey as well. Oh, no, Greg Lacey. I was actually interested in seeing if he could be a 3-4 outside linebacker because he's got A to C power moves. Maybe? Maybe? But again, I just don't think there's like a highly athletic outside linebacker that would make me want to make the switch this year. White Costanza. White Costanza versus Austin Hitchens is really the debate we need to have here. We know he has A finesse moves, A awareness, B tackle. D to F uh, injury is concerning. C power move as well. So you know, he's got an A, B, C in terms of the three things you really need here. And Austin Hitchens, similar athlete. He does not have the get off, though. The difference between poor acceleration and elite acceleration has got to be big, right? He's kind of just the power rush variant of Costanzo, right? They both have B block shedding and C, the one that they're not strong in. And I would just imagine that Austin Hitchens is A power move. The get off alone, the difference between poor and elite has to give Costanzo the edge though. Neither is going to have that great top end speed. I mean, Hitchens 40 times was better despite the worst accelerations. So that makes me think Hitchens has maybe one or two speed better as we look here at Ben Quinn. It was very high on my board until I realized he had D to F. Uh, man. I think it had B to D before maybe, so we know that that's D. I don't want to take a guy with D in either coverage that high into the draft. Michael Bates is interesting. Another case of just I think I'm not going to take a player like that that high. 
probably, I mean, if there's a really good looking corner, I'd certainly take him in the first round. We need corner really badly outside of Quincy Boston. Uh, Darius Connor kind of stands by himself here. We have the ability to get him to 100% with a focus player, so we're probably going to do it. Again, with uh, that defensive lineman being the second. The third one, I'm not quite sure who it'll be yet, but Darius Connor and that defensive tackle are probably going to be two of them. Yes, it's it's him in a post-draft UDFA, and just because he has B to D zone and doesn't look horrible, <laughs> you know. So that's kind of my feel on this draft. Let's get towards our focus players. Uh, one other thing I want to do as well is actually just look at some draft stories here. Any players we like? Jose Whitehead. So the Heisman winner is Tavares Skinner of Clemson. So it's not Kevon Sammons. This looks like it might be a really, really stacked running back room because that's guaranteed hidden and he's not even one of the two top running backs. Uh, looks like Copeland has some injury issues. Here are some draft stories as well. Um, or I guess social media tweets. Trevor Perry. Okay, so now we know why Trevor Perry dropped. He had a dreadful combine performance. And that's the third, the day three uh, power back I like that has round one talent. If we end up not taking a guy like Kwan Simmons, he would become high on my board. And uh, so good to know there why, because we saw that Trevor Perry dropped, I think, like 66 spots or something like that, and now we know why. Uh, this week, I guess, has nothing, so let's advance one more. And let's get our focus players. We got free agency recap as well, mock draft five. Maybe you should like spread. We have like all these three things all in one week, and the previous week has nothing. And I feel like it would maybe make sense to split those up, but hey, that's not my job. Got to find the players that we want here. Darius Connor is one, of course. And then, who was the other guy that I wanted? Drum Snell is going to be our, our last guy, just because um, there's a lot of B to D. I want to see if a lot of those are D or if a lot of those are B, because they're D. I'm not says high on, but if he has a lot, if a lot of those that we saw are actually B. Um, then yeah, he's definitely going to stay on my, you know, love list. So we have Connor and we have Jerome Snell. And then the last guy was a defensive tackle. Let's find him. Monty Booker. We want to see if those are closer to A or closer to C. Because if he has three A's, I'll take, you know, the average athlete with that's just incredible at everything, you know. I doubt it's going to be that case, but I just want to make sure. Okay, so I put my own Blair at the top of my list, and it still had a stick on Simmons. But we were successful in getting uh, Darius Connor not on the board. Both Costanzo and Hitchens will be gone, confirmed now, by that sixth pick, so we're definitely going to have to trade up for one of them. Again, I do win Costanzo. Um, I wouldn't mind ending up with Hitchens. I think they're both fairly similar. I just think Costanzo is a little bit better. First off, we have confirmed that he's got uh, a finesse moves, whereas 
Austin Hitchens is just A to B on the power. I am fairly confident it's going to be A. But just that elite acceleration is going to help him a lot. Uh, I think to be more productive, poor acceleration, and then not having that high of speed either just is a little bit worrisome to me. Do we take Kevon Simmons? I think the fact that our second pick is as high as six, uh, I do lean towards taking him. If I had to choose between like Costanzo or Simmons, I would have chosen Costanzo, but the fact that both are within reach, it's hard for me to say no. I think one last thing before we get into the draft is I just want to take a look at the team and maybe go over why I have some needs ranked as I do. The number one need on this team is Ed Rusher. Uh, both of these guys sucked. I think they combined for like six sacks. That's awful. The second need on this team, I believe, is interior offensive line. We're just starting guys that are like 60 overall. Um, I don't want to do that. I would love if Deshaun Walton's our worst starter next year. It's 69 normal. Um, nice, of course. But uh, after that, um, I think safety, corner. I mean, I guess I'd go safety before corner. Maybe. I don't know. I think corner is more important. But we just don't have either safety, whereas like Boston, fine being cornerback one, obviously. Bass, I feel like, is a decent corner three like slot guy. We really just need corner two, but we need corner two really badly. After that, I guess I'd go receiver, though. I mean, looking at him now, Slayton's better than I give him credit for. I think I should just trust him more. I mean, sure, it's a 74. All of his route runnings, 70 plus. His release is 70 plus. He's pretty good. I should trust him more than I did last year. So then maybe, I don't know, running back? Again, a lot of that's just because that they can perform better in um, simulation. Next would be defensive tackle. We have one. We need another. Then quarterback. Uh, I guess so what are we ranking them one is edge two is interior offensive line three is safety four is corner five is running back six is D tackle seven is receiver eight is quarterback and that's I mean everything after that is then you get to like tackle which we don't need Offense off ball linebacker, which we don't need. Tight end, we don't need. Kicker, we don't need. Punter, we do, but I guess so. I guess punter would be nine. And that's kind of how I would rank our needs going in. I guess maybe tight end two as would be 10, just because, like I said, I do believe tight end two slash fullback to be a valuable position of need. So tight end nine and then punter 10 that's our top 10 needs going into the year going into this draft i want to address the at least like all the all of the top five needs so edge interior offensive line safety so those are the top three we're absolutely spending picks like high picks in those three at the absolute minimum. There's players that I think are pretty good in all of those. So I want I want to draft those players. As we look into free agency now, let's look at the sign. John, Jonathan Taylor back to the Colts. Roquan Smith to the Bills. Um, Austin Eckler on the Falcons. Jeffrey Simmons to the Ravens. Antoine Winfield Jr. gets signed by the Chiefs. That's annoying. <laughs> Jeremy Chin. X Factor Jeremy Chen on the Colts. So the Colts got a couple of really good players. Jalen Johnson, obviously not as good in this series as he is in our Bear series. In the Bear series, he's an absolute killer X Factor player. Chiefs also go out and get Ed Davis.
And that's kind of it, I guess, for the really noteworthy. Oh, the Derek Brown to the Broncos. So the Chiefs got a couple guys. The Broncos got a superstar defensive tackle. Man, Antoine Winfield to the Chiefs. How are they affording these people, man? Didn't they have to trade Tyree Kills? So they wouldn't have to, I guess, paying Antoine Winfield Jr. and paying, as we see, another corner there to the Chiefs as well. Paying Antoine Winfield Jr. and paying Tyree Kill are two very different things. We had Derek Brown to the Broncos and then Antoine Winfield Jr. to the Chiefs are the two big ones. And we got disconnected again. Let's go. Let's get back in here. I guess I have to redo the private workouts real quick. Let's do that. Let's see who are they. We had. Uh, I don't remember. We had. Uh, why can't I find these people? Monty Booker was one. We had Darius Calder as well. And then we had Jerome Snell. Jeremy Snell? Jerome Snell? Jerome Snell as the third. Let's get the focus scouted. But that'll basically do it for the preview of this class. I guess we'll get the extra information on those three, see if that changes my mind on anything. And then we'll kind of think up my game plan for this draft. I have an idea of what I want to do. As we get, oh, Darius Carter is a top five player in this class. The guy with only one A being top five is something like, kind of maybe gives you an idea of how this class is in general. Maybe not that strong. I mean, that many Bs is also good. He's like, B everything. It's not like he's bad. He just doesn't have any outstanding qualities. Uh, let's look at Monty Booker. Yeah, both of those end up being C. He had A to C, and they were both at the very low end. So that removes him from my short list possibilities. Probably not going to be a draft pick by us. His lack of athleticism is no longer justified by his skills. And then Jerome Snell. Was he in the B's or was he in the D's? It looks like we have one B, B, B to C. So one was D, B to C. So he only has one D. Not only does he have no Fs, he only has one D even. So, yeah, I really like Jerome Snell. A injury as well is awesome. As offensive linemen tend to get injured more than other positions in this game. So Jerome Snell is absolutely part of my... Um, you know, whatever my game plan. So let's go through the game plan. Um, Kevon Simmons, I think, is going to be the first pick in this draft. Um, after that, I do plan on getting Wyatt Costanzo, treading up two, three from six. I don't think it'll take that much, honestly. And those will be the two picks that I hope to make at the top of this draft. If we can't trade up the three, it's just like cost too much or something. Austin Hitches, Austin Hitchens trading up from six to five, I think, should be very possible for us. Um, I mean, A awareness, B block shed, A finesse moves, B tackle, Austin Hitchens, also D def injury. Neither. They're both super injury prone, which ugh, is annoying. But I just think Wyatt Costanzo, that literally just it's the acceleration I think sets him apart. Having elite something at least. So those are the two players that I hope to draft at the top of this draft. Um, we might even be able to trade down from one to two. We know the Giants are willing to take running back. Melvin Blair is the top 
running back. He's also a top five talent, so they might try to take Melvin Blair. Um, that might be risky, though, because we'd probably get, what, like a third to trade down from one to two. We could use that third to trade back up to get Wyatt Costanzo. Anyway, either the top of the second, or we might trade back into the first just to make sure we get him. Darius Connor, I definitely don't want to miss out on him now that we know that he's a top five player in this class. Also, really the only safety worth drafting. Uh, after that, it's Jerome Snell with the late second slash early third. And then Luis Sanchez uh, in that same range. Um, I think that's kind of the five-player game plan I have for this. I think if we can come out with those... Those five players, those are really the only five players that I love in this whole class. And either even White Costanzo, I only like. It's just at a position of so much need that I'm adding him to my game plan. Usually my game plan is just a few players that I love. White Costanzo is getting added just out of pure need. We need a dresser desperately. And so I'm willing to take a top pick on somebody that I like to do it. Um, that's just the reality of a draft-only rebuild. Sometimes you're just forced to pick players that are just kind of good and not great because that's the only way you can upgrade. Now let's get into this draft. Let's pause it. Um, I do want to review. It is risky, I know. Do the Giants want to trade up from 2-1? to one? They do. And it is that third round pick. Can we trust that they would take Melvin Blair over Kevon Simmons? It's really tough. It's a gamble. It's a gamble I'm willing to make. I don't really want to give away too many picks since they do pick Melvin Blair. Let's go. If they were to pick Kevon Simmons, I might honestly have drafted both Costanzo and uh, Austin Hitchens. But instead, we'll take a player I'm confident is generational in Kevon Simmons. He is hidden 93 speed. 94 acceleration, change of direction, and agility are a little bit better than I thought. Jumping is meh, strength is meh. Well, I mean, jumping is good, it just doesn't matter. Um, and now we'll try to trade up to three. White Costanzo was going at three in all the mock drafts, and we want him. So I'm going to try to trade that pick that we just got. Actually, I might even, because that could be a pick that we could use for either Snell or Sanchez. So maybe actually the later pick. We do have, you know, all the coaching whatevers. Um, they will accept that trade. Not super realistic, but I'm not as worried about making realistic trade offers in this series as I would be in, say, uh, my Bears series, where I am trying to look for realistic packages here. My only opportunity is to improve is through the draft as Wyatt Costanzo is hidden 82 speed. So pretty much what I expected. 91 acceleration is really good though. Maybe got kind of like a Bosa build where in Madden, like their speeds aren't great at all, but they both have like really, really high acceleration. Also the low injury <laughs> plays into that as well. So a Bosa kind of build. He's not as good as a Bosa though. At least I don't think... Maybe I could be surprised. Austin Hitchin does go fifth. We're definitely going to have to look at him after the draft. Uh, Emmett Lewis is another guy worth looking at after the draft. Under, if um, I wasn't so worried about fixing the defense, he definitely would have been on my board. I like him a lot. We're just going to run through here the first round. I plan on getting somewhere around pick 25 and then trading up for Darius Conner. Ben Quinn, again, I, got, I really like until I realize how bad he is at uh, man coverage. Reggie Brewer, the first receiver off the board to the Colts. I believe he's the first receiver, at least. DeMarco Bird goes here. A free safety goes. It makes me a little bit nervous. I might, my, The plan was to trade up to 25. I might trade up a little bit earlier than that. Going up 11 picks here. How much is an 11 pick move up going to cost? I just want to secure the rights to Darius Connor. He is a top five player in this class. Let's make sure we get him. How much is it going to cost? We'll need to give up like a four next year. I mean, we got to remember that starting next year, we don't have any additional draft picks. It's just a regular. 
like a regular class. Does two fours do it? No. I don't know if I'm willing to give up more than that. Are we willing to give up 86? Oh, you know what? I'm not willing to do more than that. That's the absolute must I'm willing to do. So let's simulate a little bit further in. Maybe actually get to pick 25 like I was originally intending. Maybe a little bit further. Let's risk it just a little bit. I'm not willing to risk it anymore. Let's let's trade here. 226, I believe. You know, the the packages we were offering should now be good enough for pick 26. So now we're, it's only seven spots. Maybe a six this year and a four next year will actually do it this time around. And it will. Okay, nice. Again, don't want to trade too much. I don't plan on trading any more of next round's next year's picks want to keep those but we will secure the rights to Darius Connor guaranteed top five player in this class in dev as well 91 speed is certainly good enough at safety and B basically everything except for awareness which he has a and a couple like kick returns C which who actually cares I don't for sure gonna be a very solid player a very welcome addition to this secondary. Um, I want to look at... So we got the three players that we wanted early. There's a couple of mid-round guys that we really want as well. See how far down the board they are. So Luis Sanchez is 47 and Jerome Snell is 51. Even though he's a little bit further down, I would draft Jerome Snell first because he's kind of essential to my plans where Luis Sanchez is just... He's definitely going to help us, but... Um, you know, my draft day isn't going to be ruined if we don't get our tight end two slash fullback, you know. But my draft day would be ruined if we were to not be secure the services of Jerome Snell. Desperately need him. It's our number two need. Is interior offensive line. Boyle's also good. Um, we previewed him, like, during the season or something. Center only size, which is unfortunate, but... I mean, if we could get both, should we go after Tim Boyle instead of Luis Sanchez? Too late. I made the decision. They're both far enough away that I believed simulating was a good choice. And we will not get burned. Didn't want to go pick by pick as both are available. Probably use this pick and then trade up. Actually, no, because our next pick is like, like five picks. I think we'll be good. Taking Drum Snell, hidden dev once again, four for four. Had an excellent start last year, and we are continuing it here this year. 91 strength, 69 speed. 84 acceleration is really good. Can we go five for five? We're going to simulate to our next pick. Uh, no, we're not. The Cowboys take tight end, and now I'm getting nervous. It's not going to take like anything to trade up here with the Chiefs. Yeah, it's a divisional trade. I don't care. It's we're talking about a third in the third round here. And again, I don't care as much for it's like two picks. They're gonna take our seventh round for it. They would have taken nothing for it, I think. Or maybe it has to be just one pick at a time to do it for nothing. But want to secure the rights and get our game plan. We're gonna go five for five on our game plan. Get all five guys that we wanted. And we're gonna go five for five hidden dev as well. The game plan could not have gone any better than it did. But this is kind of where I see a drop-off in this draft. Um, not a lot of guys that I really like at this point anymore. Um, Akima Costa is somebody that I do like, though. Pretty good athlete. Beef and S moves. Get another edge here. Only 83 speed. I would have thought great would be a little bit more than that. Normal dev, surprising. Uh, I mean, not surprising. What's the word? Disappointing. It's a little bit of a disappointing pick as the hidden dev run will end. Last season, I think we went seven straight hidden devs. This year, we make it five. Putting a lot of pressure on my future self to continue this draft success. Um, Obviously, in future years, we don't won't have 
the kind of draft capital that we have the first two years. So I'm not really expecting myself to keep it up. Same thing, guys, we really know are good at this point are running backs, so we, but we already took one. I'm not going to take a second running back when you took an X-Factor caliber running back, or at least I think he will be. I like Enrique Gray is intriguing. Do we take receiver? He looks super, super bad, if I'm being honest. Nah, yeah, I think we have to pass on him. Maybe not. We'll come back to it. Defensive tackle still on the list of needs. Another interior offensive lineman still on the list of needs. We needed at least two, if not three. So let's take Eddie Newton, and he is normal dev. 69 speed, nice, 85 strength. As we now go all the way to the seventh round, we kind of obliterated our day three picks here. I do think we had a good draft, though. It's hard to be mad at five straight hidden devs, and I think they're all going to be good, too, not just like hidden dev, but bad. Um, I did like those two fullbacks a lot, but having drafted our boy Luis Sanchez, we don't need them anymore. Tim Vogel, elite kick power and B. Accuracy is hidden. So we have a hidden kicker and punter. In two years, it's hard to do better than that. Welker was a superstar. He gives me just like star dev vibes. But still very happy with that. I'll change these guys' appearances and numbers, and I'll get back to you soon. And here we are, and this was a great class for us. As we see, all five of our hidden devs start at the draft are all 70 plus as well. And ladies and gentlemen, we keep on rolling with these draft classes. Kevon Simmons, 84 overall, 21 years old. And look at these ratings. Trucking, 85. Spin move, 88. Stiff form, 89. Juke move, 90. And then break tackle at 91. He's going to be an elite level runner. Carrying at 87 as well is very good. Ball carrier version at 83. Not a great catcher, but in terms of just running the ball, what is that, like a Nick Chubb build? He is incredible. Wyatt Costanzo, 75 overall. I do imagine we're going to play a 4-3, so we won't be moving him to end. I'm getting a lot of disconnects here, so I'm just trying to do the minimum amount of work I can before we go ahead weeks. Not even every player is like at their final form in terms of gear and stuff. I tried to get at least the top picks there. Um, any finesse moves is... Awesome for him. 74 block shed, 68 power. Darius Connor. Um, 77 hybrid and zone. As we see, his coverages are really good. 76 zone and 73 man to start out are like really good. If he was just titch faster, I'd move him to corner. Um, Jerome Snell. He's another guy that I think I have to work on his build a little bit. This isn't his final form, but uh, really good looking player. Only has one thing in the 60s. Technically two, but that plus three is permanent on one of those ratings. Luis Sanchez, 72 possession kind of player. 68 blo uh, run block is good. I almost said block shed. Um, 83 speed. This so may be a little bit less than I was hoping, but uh, still going to be really good for us. Akeem Acosta, 67 normal. Not great. Not a great pick. He's literally not even better than either the edge rushers we started last year, so was only able to figure out one of those starting positions at edge instead of both. Like I had some hope we would do Eddie Newton. Uh, will be He's good enough to be our fifth lineman. So we got two starters. Don't think Eddie Newton is like a long-term solution at it by any means. Not terrible. Probably going to be our starting center this year. And then Tim Vogel at punter. 97 kick power, 78 accuracy, 55 awareness. Like he, he's like four... Awareness lower and like two kick power lower than Welker, who we got last year. So, or did Welker also have like 80 accuracy? I can't remember. Either way, he's really, really good. And the fact that we've been able to figure out kicker and punter and like fullback, like the three 
you know, kind of positions where it's hard to get uh, star dev players or higher. I mean, technically, Luis Sanchez is, you know, a uh, tight end. But uh, seeing here, we do have the top two players in this class. Um, ben Quinn, I just want to look at 76. Only 66 man coverage. But with 77 zone, if he's better than star, then I might have a little bit of regrets not picking him. But he's just star. I think we're fine with it. Star dev, 66 man coverage to start out is a bit rough. Um, Emmett Lewis is another guy I really liked. Ends up being 74. So Jerome Snell is really as good as Emmett Lewis, and we got him later. So I'm not mad about that either. Uh, who else do we need to figure look at? We need to look at Austin Hitchens, who is a normal dev. Okay, 74 overall. 78 power moves, 75 block shed, 68. So, like, very similar players. Just that acceleration is... His speed is one higher, but his acceleration is eight lower. Um, also, the the normal dev. Um, I think Wyatt Costanzo, he's 22, isn't he? And then he's 21. So, that he does have that on him. But other than that, I think Costanzo was the better pick. Let's look at what the division did. Dextral Brown is a 70 plus. I just look at all the anyone 70 plus. I just want to see in the division. 77 zone coverage, not very fast, but it's got good zone coverage. Got hidden dev. Good pick by the Broncos, I think overall. Star dev. What does that mean for Justin? Oh no, he's strong safety, not free safety. So Simmons is good. JT Quincy was an offensive lineman on our board. Taken here, 74 in dev. Another guy who's basically the same kind of player that Snell is. And we got Snell much later, so I'm happy with it, especially if he is star, which he is. Let's go to the Chiefs. They got a couple 70 pluses. Rakeem Arnett, another offensive lineman on our board, 72 23. So Snell's a lot better. He's 74 21. And star dev. So I was going to say, unless Arnett's superstar, then he wins still. But he's not. Terrence Swift, another 70-plus overall, and another hidden dev for the Chiefs. The Chiefs, really good offseason. Signed Antoine Winfield Jr. Got a couple of 70-plus overall hidden dev players in the draft. And then, uh, yeah, that's actually it uh, for our... Draft position previews. I said it's really risky to have a bad draft because your team doesn't improve. We did not have that here. I think we have five players who are all going to play really big roles for us next year. I mean, six because we have punter as well, I think. I mean, even seven because we do have a starting center. Not a great one. But we have six starters coming out of this draft. I think it's hard to imagine doing better than that. As we will advance here to the next week and see if we have any week one preseason scenarios. Maybe. I think we're stuck, so I'll see you in a minute. And we are back here and we have a training camp standout. Probably going to be... Who would it be? It's Victor Giles. Okay, I was worried that it would be Wyatt Costanzo because that would be... He'd be only star. He probably is only star, but I'd rather not have that confirmed at this far into the future. We'll get some tackling for him. Playwright would have been nice too, but... Uh, I want to get some sure tackling on this team. And we are now ready for cuts. I've been disconnected like crazy all preseason. Uh, I signed some veterans for like the mentors, and I'll just show you as I'm cutting here. As we see Damian uh, Williams is one. Former Chiefs running back. Uh, wanted to get some XP boost for Colin Simmons. You might think, well, is he too good? Maybe, but with those ratings to start out, I have high hopes. He has potential to be like a all 99, like 99 everything, trucking, stiff arm, spin, and juke. Probably not going to get there as we see tight end. We got Rudolph back. Um, you might say Louis Smart is too good as well, but you got Luis Sanchez as well. So getting two young players that I have long-term hopes for, extra XP makes sense. 
Got for one for a left tackle there for Brian Pearson. It was hard not to give it to a guy like Jerome Snow. I just think Brian Pearson with the superstar dev, I'm more invested in him becoming really good. Jerome Snow, I obviously want him to be really good too. Just I'm more worried about making sure that Pearson, because you know he has the superstar abilities. I want to get to those superstar abilities faster. Defensively, Benson Mayoa to help in the development of Wyatt Costanzo, who we did kick down to end um, in our scheme. So he's going to be the first one here. Not Nothing at right end, as you might suspect. We don't even have any hidden depth players. Nobody really that I'm looking to be a long-term piece. Timmy Reed, we did not go for one at defensive tackle. He is really good, and with just the rest of the DT room, I don't really care for so dt was one of the tough cuts for not getting a mentor we also went middle linebacker for the linebacker last year we went left outside linebacker for giles because he had head and dev just kind of evening it out so that michael franklin despite being normal dev can have a year of having a mentor also didn't go in for a corner which is a bummer michael boston i want him to develop it since he's kind of the only corner decided not to um, get a mentor for him. I think I know who the last cut is going to be. We're just going to have Downing here on the practice squad. And that will be the team for this year. So again, we have mentors at running back, tight end, and left tackle on offense. I don't know if it helps the right tackle too. That would be cool if it did. That would be an extra bonus for choosing left tackle. I don't think, um, as I turn practice squad stealing off, this rebuild is hard enough. I don't want people taking people from my practice squad. But I do want to be able to take from other people's practice squads if I want to. Um, as you see, I did a couple times here. I just... Um, yeah, I would hope that the mentor would help right tackle too. I just don't believe that uh, it does. Defensively, we went for left end for Costanzo, middle linebacker for Michael Franklin, and free safety for Darius Connor. The last thing I want to do is just give us... One last look of this team before we end the episode. Just see how improved it is when we were looking a year ago. Like we saw a lot of hints. We didn't know what was up. Lewis Smart was a star. Now he's X Factor. Still needs some interior offensive line help. But we got tied at we got an incredible tight end room. Receiver I'm fine with. I don't love. Running back, I now love. Tackle I'm really happy with. Offensively, I think we are now like absolutely set. No need to do anything for a running back, tight end, or tackle. Defensively, we got ourselves another defensive lineman. We tried for two, only really hit on one uh, corner. We're probably actually worse at corner than we were last year, which is concerning. I mean, Boston and Bass, you know, both developed, which is good. But like our third corner is probably worse than it was last year, which isn't good. Darius Connor, though, obviously a very big addition. Michael Franklin, I think how our offense off-ball linebacker position is perceived it depends on what Michael Franklin can do. If he can get off normal this year, that would be huge. But, you know, I said we have these three positions that I really like where we're at on offense, running back, tackle, and tight end. Defensively, it's maybe off-ball linebacker. And like I said, a lot of that has to do with the development of Michael Franklin. So I think we're better off offensively uh, to start – two years through this franchise. I just think the drafts have been better offensively than they have been defensively, honestly. I mean, I guess last year getting Boston and Timmy Reid and two good off-ball linebackers was good. But we couldn't do much. We could only add a couple guys that I actually really liked on defense this year, which isn't great. And then now we're doing dealing with just like regular draft capital as well. It's going to be difficult but here's what we were able to do with the first two years of all that draft capital we were able to get with expansion. Hopefully Peyton Manning can be satisfied with what we've done. We'll start the season against the Ravens, and that will be next episode. Thanks for sticking with me, and I will see you then.